Okay, guys, we are ready to start with the next presentation. It's going to be about uh, Haris Shegic's personal journey in the open source environment. So we are going to have some very interesting and light-hearted um, memories about what has been going on in this open source environment. So give it up for Haris. Hi, guys. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm Harris. Um, I'm <clears throat> I was asked to do this uh, talk, and I didn't figure out anything else uh, but to talk about the, my journey to the Tux landscape, which ended with Geeko. Um, as you may, may consider, um, I'm currently working at SUSE um, as a QA um, automation lead or something like that. So basically, I'm touching all the products uh, in the CSS department at SUSE. Uh, what I would like to share with you today is basically my point of view as a member of the community, what's the understanding, and uh, what, what and how I consider community as such. So first of all, thank you for being here. I'm really happy there are a couple of people here. My last talk was like 11 years ago, so um, it's interesting. Um, I'm not trying to profile or show off or what, whatever myself, but I would like to start from the beginning. Therefore, some history facts. Um, I started with Linux in 1996, uh, did a couple of um, distributions. Um, as a member of the community in Germany, I obviously started with SUSE, uh, tried a lot, um, and by 1999 I ended with Debian, and I actually consider myself as a Debian guy, uh, still. <laughs> um, a part of that, I tried some BSD, um, did some Ubuntu, and um, what's the name, uh, Gentoo as well? Uh, and since 2016, I'm on OpenSUSE. Um, besides that, I was the founder of the Linux user group in 1999. Um, I've worked on OFTC, Open and Free Technical Community, um, in the NOC department uh, but some time, and I'm a, I'm a member of the Software and Public Interest as well. So um, enough of me. Um, the history um, and the point of view that I want to clarify here is why do we use Linux? Why are we a part of the community? Uh, what's, what drive us um, to call ourselves members of the community? So uh, for the most of us, basically, um, Linux's operating system is a starting point. Um, but what are the other reasons and um, how do we um, consider ourselves um, to be a member of the community? Um, community, um, what's actually community uh, from your perspective? I mean, you guys are here, obviously, we have a really good conference, there are a couple of talks, but what's the point of it? Do we want to do something? Do we want to solve something? What's the deal here? So um, I, for my part, <coughs> com <coughs> consider community um, as um, a way, maybe way of living, lifestyle. Uh, we all have different approaches. We have the same goals. Um, we have the freedom of choice. We can do whatever we want, however we want it. Um, we want, most of us want to know, learn things and share the knowledge as well. We want to progress, we want the improvement, and basically we are doing that by communicating. Um, and for the most interesting part is how do we communicate? So if we have an issue, we basically first of all start Googling and solving problems. There are, depending on the project, there are several mailing lists, archives, forums, ways of the communication there. There are FAQs and documentation, uh, documentation web pages as well. Um, 
tons of wikis, IRC chat, of course, as well. There are conferences like this, and at the end, it, if everything fails, we read the fucking manual. So, um, what do you guys prefer? How do you prefer to be a part of the community? Is there any project you're involved on? What's the deal there? <coughs> so, <coughs> I was, as I mentioned, I was um, trying to interact with diff uh, different projects and um, pro um, well, movements in the open source community. And as you may know by now, I ended with OpenSUSE project. What I'm trying to present here today is how a guy who is actually not really a developer, not really a user, um, see the OpenSUSE project. So is anyone here who knows about OpenSUSE in detail? Not really, right? What do we know about OpenSUSE? It's a distribution, right? Wrong. OpenSUSE is a project. OpenSUSE is a freaking amazing project, to be honest. So um, it was a needed introduction um, to start with OpenSUSE because um, we have a Linux distribution, actually two of those, or to be more precise, four of those, if you count Argon and Krypton as well. We have OpenSUSE Cubic. We have the Open Build Service. Any of you guys know Open Build Service? I'm going to speak in a couple of, uh, couple of minutes later about this. We have an OpenQA. Do you guys know OpenQA? Probably not. Um, there is OSEM. OSEM is a quite cool new part of the OpenSUSE project. Um, are you guys familiar with Jengouts? Probably not. Jengouts is this OpenSUSE implementation of Google Hangouts, where you can have um, video conferencing um, open source way. Um, you guys know Yast, right? Yast is there, love it or hate it. There's Kiwi, and we have Zipper, LibZip as a part of the project as well. So um, I just mentioned all of those. So let's go. Um, let's go start with the basics. We have OpenSUSE Leap, and the most important part here to know OpenSUSE Leap is not SUSE Linux Enterprise Server or Desktop. This is a common mistake because uh, back in the days we had OpenSUSE and OpenSUSE Bell. Well, it's SUSE, it's not. No, no, no. OpenSUSE Leap is not a SUSE Linux Enterprise Server or Desktop. So um, we have the stable dis distribution based on um, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server sources. And we have 18 months of maintenance and security updates per minor release. How we came to this is basically the traditional distribution dilemma. We have a Linux distribution. We have a part of the people who want to, to, to have it more stable. We have a people, developers mainly, who wants to have it fancy and new. And well, basically, they want to have the new stuff as, uh, as soon as possible. So um, the purpose of Leap, um, as far as I understand, is to have a um, solid, stable base, um, which is kind of sponsored by SUSE employees. Because um, as Leap was founded, we have more actively contributed Sleek code um, which is going back to OpenSUSE, in this case, Leap. Um, the question is, do we actually want to have that, or do we, have, do we want to have something else? This else is the fancy stuff called Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed, rolling release, also not a SUSE Linux Enterprise server, but, fun fact, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server is based on Tumbleweed. So, um, that's kind of, we have SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, which is giving the stuff to Leap, and then we have Tumbleweed, which is giving stuff to SUSE Linux Enterprise. So, yeah. Um, 
On a rolling release, um, um, yeah, at this point I would like to quote <laughs> an unknown author who said, rolling release are the future of Linux distributions. Who thinks this is right? Um, I don't think so, to be honest, but I use Tumbleweed, so kind of an uh, interesting, interesting approach. Um, the point of rolling release is basically we don't have a release schedule. Um, we have practically updates of all packages. Um, the delivery is when it's ready, so it's basically a Debian approach. Release is ready when it's ready. And there are several distributions out, um, for example, Arch, Gentoo, whatever. So um, it's, maybe it's a fancy stuff, maybe not, I don't know. We'll see if this trend survives. Um, we are coming to Cubic, um, OpenSUSE Cubic. Um, it's um, founded in 2017, May of 2017. It's a sub-project of, of OpenSUSE, and it's basically focused on container technologies. Um, it uses ButterFS, um, and it's kind of built on two modules, which is on one side, MicroS, which is Tumbleweed-based cluster host operating system, and Cube ADM. Um, the interesting part about the Cubic, Cubic is an upstream for SUSE Container as a Service platform called CASP. And this is one of the emerging products at SUSE at the moment. Um, I spoke about OBS. Um, how many of you guys use OBS? None? Uh, it's a shame. I didn't use it as well, to be honest. And i learning to love it on a daily basis. OBS gave us the opportunity to build our own packages with, well, you can do it, do it on CLI, but you can do it also on, on, via web GUI. So you don't need to know anything about packaging RPMs. You don't need to know anything about packaging uh, dev files. You don't need to know anything about uh, Arch, to know about Arch. It's just click it, create one file, and the uh, whole magic happens um, in behind. So this is a really, um, really interesting uh, sub-project on OpenSUSE side, which gives something back to the community. And this is um, the fact, because Open Build Service is used by OnCloud, is used by Endless Linux, it's used by Linux Foundation, actually. VLC guys who are also here, they are using it. Um, some companies, uh, like, for example, Dell and Cry and Intel are using it, and many, many others. So Open Build Service is widely used, but no, no one knows about it, actually. So uh, that's about Open Build Service. Um, OpenQA, well, OpenQA is an interesting thing. Um, are you rec rec recording this? Can you shut down it or mute it or? The next, thi next thing I want to know, uh, I want to say, I have to say actually, OpenQA is a really cool tool. I never said it, please delete it. Um, it's like love-hate relationship bet me, between me and OpenQA. OpenQA gives us ability to fully test Linux distribution from the user perspective. That means you can install a virtual environment or a bare metal on different platforms, um, which is at the moment uh, Intel, Power, Arch, and S390, and test installation from the mm, uh, user perspective. Uh, in the meantime, you can even test multi-machine stuff there. Um, so um, it, it gives us the opportunity to test installation, and afterwards, as we have our environment, we can also test um, user, uh, user applications. Um, OpenQA is an integral part of Tumbleweed and Leap um, release cycle. Um, Red Hat uses it for Fedora, and we have several SUSE customers who have uh, productive installation on OpenK as well. So this is a really nice thing about 
um, one of the many sub-projects of OpenSUSE. Um, as I mentioned before, awesome. Um, well, to be honest, in every project, there is not the option or not a possibility to be involved in uh, all the sub-projects. For me, this is the case in OSEM. Um, I'm not involved in it. I barely know anything about it, but uh, the fact is, if you ever um, was involved in any kind of OpenSUSE-related events, conference, summit, you, will probably use, uh, you have probably used events.opensuse.org which runs awesome. And for example, Fostem uses it as well. So this is a nice thing. Um, probably most of the people don't realize that, but this is OpenSUSE project. Um, and yes, uh, Yast. Back, back in the days, uh, as you have installed SUSE, before, long before OpenSUSE, one of the first things you a uh, normal human being um, has done was disabling Yast. Why? Um, because Yast, <laughs> um, Yast is a myth. Um, it helps a lot. Um, it is yet another setup tool, and it can help you, but it can also break your system back in the days. In the meantime, to be honest, I personally use Yast on a daily basis because it's much easier to use Yast than to take care of System B, for example, or something else. So um, Yast is a powerful tool, and there are some fun facts to be named here. Um, Yast is an open source project, so everyone can contribute there and port it and use it if there is a will for this. Um, Yast has as well as a GUI as a CLI text console uh, mode available. Anyone used Auto Yast? Uh, I recently started using it, um, so basically a year ago, and I love it. I love it for automation because you, uh, using Auto Yast, you, you can deploy the system as a customer will do it without doing all the menus, and at the end you have really done system basically as a um, user would do it as well. Um, and Yast has his own uh, language called ECP. So hate it or love it, it's up to you, but um, Yast is also a sub-project of OpenSUSE. And there's Kiwi. So anyone familiar with Open Build Service, uh, with op uh, OpenSUSE Studio or SUSE Studio? This was a web page where you could build your own images, your, your own distributions. Um, and this was basically interface, graphical interface for Kiwi. So Kiwi gives you the opportunity to create your own images. Um, it's widely used, um, but nobody knows that it's used. And I think this is a really um, a quality um, quality point because um, in SUSE and on the customer side as well, Kiwi is used for creating uh, tons and tons of images for the virtual environment, for, for the uh, CDs, DVDs, USB sticks. You can even do a network boot image with it. So um, um, Kiwi is powerful, but you should uh, take your time to get to know it. <laughs> Um, and, um, of course, in OpenSUSE we have Zipper and LibZip, which is the package management there. Uh, so, we have our own app, yeah. Um, so, OpenSUSE uh, community, communication is a key. Um, at this point, going back to the Linux distributions, we have Tumbleweed as a rolling release. We have Leap um, for what? Uh, do we want to have Leap on a desktop? Do we want to have it on a server? Do we want to have it in the cloud? Um, I personally use Tumbleweed, but um, is there a need to have um, 
enterprise-based Linux distribution in a cloud? It's a question everyone should answer for, uh, for themselves. Um, yeah. So, um, how do we communicate in, in an OpenSUSE project? Well, there's, uh, there's a blog post called um, News OpenSUSE Org. Um, we have a wiki, <laughs> uh, Planet for the Developers, uh, IRC uh, server, which is on Freenode, sponsored, supported by. Uh, there are mailing list ar ar archives on list OpenSUSE Org, and there's also uh, events OpenSUSE Org for the conferences. So that's the way how we communicate uh, so far. Um, I think my personal opinion here is if you want to participate, you don't need, you don't need to be the developer. You don't need to be the, um, the guy who's driving everything. You just need to be involved. And you can be involved by using these various channels of communication and participating, sharing the ideas, sharing the knowledge, and um, having fun with it. So um, please join us um, if you have time for it. Um, the summary. Um, the summary is we have one of the most open open source um, communities um, in the field. Um, our community is led and driven while still back-ended by the strong corporate partner, does, does not and cannot uh, exact any kind of a control. Um, this is obviously targeting SUSE. Um, and we have a lot of good upstream people who are um, participating in development of the distributions and also of a whole lot of other projects which I, just, which I just named. And the most important part here is um, we really belo believe in the motto, have a lot of fun. So um, for me, it's still a journey um, being part of this project. It's still a way of um, participating in an open source community. And um, I can really recommend to everyone just to join the, com the, the, the project and find any kind of a sub-project and have fun. <laughs> so um, at this point, if there are any questions, um, I will be really glad to answer it. Be my guest. What's this <laughs> microphone? <laughs> OK. <coughs> so in general, how often does uh, open source enterprise base or fork its sources from Tumbleweed? You said it's ready when it's ready, but Debian, for example, is two years in general? Um, you are now asking how often do we have uh, open, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise yes. release. Uh, well, to be honest, I really don't know the, the cycle, but there is on the SUSE.com page um, um, slides where you can see um, what's the major release out. So on the 12 base, we have 12 SP4, which is hopefully coming out uh, sometime next month. Mm -hmm. And we already started uh, with development of 15 SP1. I see. And uh, is the file behind the open build system, the one you mentioned where you configure what kind of package you want to build, is it, is it similar to package build in Arch? I'm not familiar with package build in Arch, but it's, it's like a just bash a, script. It, it's in essence. No, it's just a, it's just a XML file. Mm -hmm, I see. And uh, the open queue you mentioned, does it in include integration tests, for example, clicking on GUIs or how different text mode applications uh, interact with each other? You can do whatever you want. Literally. Literally. Great. And for Kiwi, is Yast the back end of Kiwi? No, I wouldn't say so. Okay, and can you ask be scripted or replace Ansible or Chef for uh, provisioning workstations or servers? Uh, yeah, that's a really good one. Um, you could do it, but um, the um, advantage of Salt, Ansible, Chef, Chef Puppet, and all those tools is that you can do it simultaneously of a number of nodes. 
AutoYast is basically uh, to do it automatically per system. So you are doing out uh, installation with AutoYast. Um, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, uh, Salt are not there to create an installation. They are there to manage the system. So that's the main difference. You could do really nasty stuff executing AutoYast files on an installed system. Just try it if you want. I will. I wouldn't you. do it. <laughs> that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Uh, so you mentioned Leap uh, is based on uh, SUSE Enterprise sources. Exactly. Right? And uh, supported for 18 months? Exactly. Uh, how long is the SUSE Enterprise support cycle? I mean, it, how much it, money it, do it, you it, have? it sounds like uh, after 18 months you stop per building the sources. Well, usually after 18 months we have another re release. Of, of SUSE Enterprise or of Leap? Um, as well. So, 18 months uh, uh, release for both. Um, what I'm not willing to um, admit or to say here, depending on how you want to see, um, those are two different things. That, that's something I maybe missed here in the presentation. I tried at least to clarify that open SUSE is not SUSE. Yeah, but, it, but it, if Leap is based on the sources of uh, SUSE Enterprise. Yeah. Nevertheless, you can always take the sources and create your own distribution. Okay, but I'm assuming uh, updates for Leap stop at uh, 18 months, right? That's the idea. Uh, uh, and I'm assuming updates for SUSE Enterprise uh, are uh, long, long, for a longer period, right? You get what you pay for. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? Hi. Hi. Maybe, maybe I have one question. Sure. Uh, why OpenSUSE, like a distribution now, instead of any other, what are the selling points for OpenSUSE? I haven't tried it for a long time, I must oh, admit, this, that's why this, I, this, I want this to is, This is the favorite now. question. This is the favorite question of any, um, uh, any conference. Um, I basically tried to point out here, um, I'm not trying to compare OpenSUSE to Debian. I'm not trying to compare OpenSUSE to Arch. Um, but first of all, um, you have, as the colleague um, uh, also noted, you have the SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, solutions behind the stable release if you're speaking about uh, the distribution, Linux distribution, on one side. On the other side, you have a bleeding edge, fully tested rolling release. So Tumbleweed will be released only if the OpenQA instance is green. All the tests which you can participate in if you find something that is missing, um, you can put it upstream to OpenQA and Tumbleweed will be tested there. And you have the bleeding edge with newest packages, um, Linux distribution as a rolling release. Those two differences, I cannot see um, similarity to Arch or to Gen2 or to anyone else. I'm not saying Tumbleweed is better. Everyone should use whatever they prefer and want. It's a point of it, of the community. But the difference here is um, on the rolling release side, everything is tested as far the test cases are there. And on the stable release, you have really enterprise Linux distribution behind it. They're not founding, uh, well, they are founding us, but they're not um, uh, influencing um, the OpenSUSE Leap Linux distribution, SUSE is not influencing it, it's contributing to it. And that's, that's the nice, uh, nice part. Uh, we have KDA and GNOME. Is KDA besides in uh, OpenSUSE somewhere else? I don't know, to be honest. I'm not using a KDE. Um, we have ButterFS, for example. Um, 
and those are the selling points for the most people. If that's not enough, pick me up afterwards. We can go through all of this. There's a question over there? Yeah. And what about ZFS? Sorry? ZFS. Do you have any support of OpenZFS? Um, To be honest, I don't know. I kind of remember we have ZFS um, as a package, but um, if it's supported, like supported, maintained, I don't know. OK, thanks. I'll check it. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? OK, in that case, let's thank Harris with a round of minutes. applause. Thank you, guys. Yeah.